to the doom, my platoon in a hurry. The cemetery, I'm dying to know. People love it there. Everybody is dying to go. Heaven, I'm dying to know. So the flesh died daily. You live in a stock, but I'm dying to go. From a young and I was just dying to flow. Put the father here. You can hear the eye dying to flow. Since I was a child, I always learned how to express myself and my mind clearly. No, why it's so cold? When I got here, I already knew how to talk. So that translated well into me being an artist. The hip-hop thing kind of came naturally. I knew that rap was in my blood. Being a lyricist is not difficult. Writing punchlines and bars and song concepts is not difficult to me because it's who I am. The hip-hop artists that have formed my hip-hop mind since I was a kid have always been the Rough Riders, the Locks, DMX. I had never seen an entity sweep up a community like that. The entire city was on fire from them and, and it just, it was natural for me to just be drawn to them. My favorite hip-hop artist has always been Styles P. Nobody paints murder and carnage like Styles P. The graphic detail that he expresses these bars in, I want to express bars for life like that. Speaking life and speaking truth and speaking real was the best way to save the community I was so dismayed with. I speak about Christ, I talk about God, I talk about life and that more abundantly, and I do it in rap form. I'm a Christian rapper. This is Morris and Livingston Ave. This is where I grew up at. This is where I call home. There's always two sides to everybody's life. My parents did the best that they could to keep me out of the streets, but I wanted to be in them. My pops didn't teach me how to fight. I learned how to fight outside. Outside, I learned how to network. Outside, I learned how to lead. On the block, do shooting dice. I learned my lingo from the streets. I learned how to talk. I learned the body languages. I learned the street laws out there. There's certain unspoken rules in the streets that you gotta know if you live around there. That's what I learned in Yonkers. A lot of homies make it out the streets and they never come back. But as a Christian, we don't got that luxury. When I left and came back, like I still had access to them. So now I'm like, yo, fam, I've been somewhere different. I've seen somewhere different. You remember me. You remember us and our relationship and our friendship. Yo, I'm leaning on that friendship because I want to tell you about God now. I can't stand this process. It's like eating vegetables, yo. Like, you know it's doing your body good. It's just like, oh. The album, it, it pulls so much out of you. I don't know, maybe because it's my first one. Mm -hmm. From what I hear, like, the first one is the most difficult one. It's like stressful. And, yo, man, this joint is exhausting. I'll be tired after writing. I'll be, I'll be taking naps after songs because I know I put everything on the pad. Mm -hmm. I put everything there. I need a day. Thank you for telling me I never make it. I need a day. We ain't the real because you had to fake it. I need a day. I need a day. Oh yeah, I need a day. The transition from the mixtapes to memoirs of the perfect world is tantamount to being born and then going from like a toddler to a grown man. Let me start from there, bro. I gotta do something else on that part. That progression, right there. The heartache, the happiness, the sadness, all of those different emotions and all those different occurrences in life that happen between those two stages of life is what has happened to me from an artist's perspective between these two projects. And it's been life changing, life altering. It's been super difficult at times, but it's a change that I'm proud of. It's allowed me to create in an entirely different fashion than I used to. It sounded good in my headphones. If that sound can sit behind the major two, I think it'll be all right. Me and my brother, DJ Why Not, we came on the scene with the mixtapes. We wanted to express ourselves as freely as possible as we wanted to, and we wanted to give the listeners something they could vibe to and just create expressively without limitation. With mixtapes, the focus isn't there like it is with an album. An album is something that takes time and effort, and it never stops taking time and effort from the start to the finish, and that's different. Yo, let me do that part over to you, bro. The album is called Memoirs of a Perfect World. It's basically my memories of my delusions, because there's no such thing as a perfect world. 
So me telling you what my memoirs of a perfect world is, is basically me telling you what I was delusional about. These lessons that I had thought I had learned about life, the processes associated with growing up, even the lessons that I thought I knew within the genre, all the delusions that I had that God brought to my attention and showed me the truth about is what I put on this album. I believe your first album is supposed to pull something from you that you ain't never pulled from yourself before. And that's a process and that takes time. Every song is a different lesson that God taught me about how I was seeing things the wrong way. From life to love to family to streets to everything, every song is me basically admitting how wrong I was about each of those things that I was convinced I was right about. This whole process just showed me who I was in a way that I wasn't prepared for initially. I had arguments with God, all of which I lost during this album because he told me to write about things that I didn't want to tell nobody. I didn't want to express those things. I didn't think that those people had the right to know about those parts of my life. But that's where the submission process has to happen in you as an artist. If me sharing an intimate part of my life aids the you meeting Christ process, I need to throw away my inhibitions and, and, and get to work. And that's where it wasn't fun sometimes. Like that's where it was really painful sometimes. But after getting through that and trusting God and being obedient, you know, I definitely feel like I'm a better person because of it. You know, but that's part of what's taken so long because I was stubborn because I did not want to say what I was saying, but I knew I needed to. And I think I'm a better person for it now. Though. I know that I had to wait on the green light from God to do this. And now I got the green light. And now it's just really on. Believe in that. I need a debt. Oh yeah, I need a debt. That's 47 Riverdale right there. That's actually one of the first places that I recorded at. It was special, this man in that building right there. We actually knocked out my first mixtape and my second in that joint. So that place got a lot of memories for me. Hi, gang signs. <laughs> <laughs> this right here, this is where it began for me. A specialist, man. Everything that I do or have done from the moment that I started writing is a result of my interaction with specialists at some point. Anything that you like from me when I first came out is from this dude, man. I started rapping with him. I was just trying to start like writing the way I thought was hot when I first met him. And I spit my little joint to him and he was like, eh, all right, we'll see. And I was like, I was tight, cause I was like, yo, what you mean? Eh, all right, like, I know you just heard what I heard, but it was crazy back then the way I thought. And um, oh, he was dope, man. Know, like, like, it was. Cause Nate, I go by say lie. This is my brother, so yeah, I'm gonna call up. him Nate. Word up. He was like, "Yo, you make beats?" I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "Well, I rap." I was like, "Okay." I wasn't trying to hear nobody that's talking about they're trying to be an artist or whatever. So he came at the wrong time. But you know, we developed a relationship by the way of his mother, who's my pastor, and that that kind of like you know fostered the relationship that we have now. Just to know that. This dude travels all over, and it started here. It started in some grungy studio in Mount Vernon, you know what I mean? And just to see him, you know, do that, and a lot of people know him now, where nobody knew him before. You know what I'm saying? He was able to take gospel hip-hop and to bring it to another level where he's well-respected. For me, it speaks volumes for, for what our relationship is and what, and what came out of it. The point of everything is, is that God was with us, yeah. and he formed this brotherhood between me and Special. It came out of nowhere and it stood the test of time, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm here now and it's still me and him. And it'll always be like that. He's always going to be a part of everything. Oh my God, everybody supporters, put your hands in the air. After this Good Fight album, I'm coming out with a God Over Money album for all of y'all. And I felt it was right, man. When I heard this dude, I was going, I just had to add this one more to the team to make it official. So I'd like to introduce to y'all and welcome to Yummy. Say it out of the corner. Let's get it. You should make some noise for Jesus if you love him in here. Blizzle, bumps, sailor, seven, dating. Boy, wonder on the beat, you already know what it is. It's God over money, let's go. They know. God over money, it's Red Skeena. 
God's nine millimeter. Living water by the river, come and get a leader. And everybody talking about they living fast, but to God you're a peon. I mess you y'all in kilometers. When I started rapping for God, I didn't know the genre existed. Like there was local cats here and there, you know, that I knew rapped for Christ, but I wasn't exposed to the genre itself until Bizzle. I keep a big Mac for you small fries, and I mob with a pair of pumps for you tall guys. Off in the coffin, you gone for the long ride, and talking to get you tossed off in it hog tied. Yeah. Big brother Biz, just you know, we just had the good fight album release, you know what I'm saying? And now I'm the newest member of God over money. I've been in this game for years. I was an animal before that. Son of Sam mixed with Hannibal before rap. When I tell people the way I became a part of the team, they just always look at me with the with the crazy face because it don't make sense. I remember one of the homies from the block was like, yo, you heard about that dude who did Jay-Z? And I'm like, nah, you know, yo, is a Christian rapper. He was on World Star, he was radio, people was talking about him in blogs, everywhere, like, it's everywhere. First of all, you know what I'm saying, I did go with Jay-Z, you know what I'm saying, when I came out there because I love the Lord, he real blasphemous, you know what I'm saying, he, he was keeping a lot of things in the dark, I matched on him the way I knew how. I felt like Biz Diss and Jay was a negative precedent to set because I had never heard a Christian rapper get that much press. This is the first time I'm seeing this hysteria about Christian rappers being associated with this and Jay, I felt like everybody was gonna do that. At the end of the day, I felt like Christ died for Jay too. Now, I made this diss record, it's been deleted, so stop looking for it. And I didn't think nobody heard it. So flash forward, I dropped Hoodie Season 1, and um, Boss hit me up and was like, yo, Biz likes Hoodie Season. I was like, all right, cool, man. He's like, nah, he likes it a lot. After Hoodie Season, me and Biz actually had our first conversation, like on the phone. And I told him, I was like, I shouldn't have did what I did. I apologize as a man, like, for doing what I did. Because at the end of the day, we're both Christians. And whatever problem I have with you, we should have took that behind closed doors and spoke about that. Like, I shouldn't have got on wax and said that. In our genre and in all genres right now, Cosigns are important. That's a reality. And a lot, there's a lot of dope talent that never gets hurt because somebody didn't say, yo, check this guy out, or this is guy's cool, you know what I'm saying? And Biz realized that. He was like, yo, you know what, you got good talent, but you might not ever get hurt ever. You know what, come over here, let's see if we can nurture that. And that big brother aspect of our relationship has always remained intact. Biz expressed to me that he wanted my skill set to be a part of the team. You know, he liked the lyricism I brought to the table and he enjoyed the fact that I was able to humble myself and, and apologize. He told me, he's like, yo, that caught my eye about you. Like that made the final decision that I wanted you on GOM was that you was able to humble yourself and apologize about what happened. Biz basically like, you know, took me on this wing and said, listen, if you're gonna do this, let's do it right. And he taught me a lot that I didn't understand. And I'm very thankful for it. God on Money is a family that you always feel fortunate to be a part of. Biz, Dayton, have bumps. God knew what he was doing when he put me in God over money. The bond that formed with him and my team, it gave me a sense of responsibility on a family level. Like that sense of family that extends beyond my own desires. It taught me that kind of responsibility. And that's what I'm most grateful for. Like Christian brothers who give you a reason to keep sense. That's what God over money gave me. God over money, money, God. This is where I am right now. We on the night, hoodie season one, hoodie season two. I did those, I did those mixtapes because I wanted the listener to trust me. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't have a lot of turn up crazy rah rah songs, mm -hmm. even though they're effective and simple, right? Which is time effect efficient. Mm -hmm. Because I wanted the listener to trust me enough to be able to have so much substance in a track that you never doubt. Like, Selah's gonna give us a record that is meaningful and that is worthwhile. Like, I'm not, he's not gonna put out no, no, no nonsense. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it took three mixtapes to, for me, to have the, the, the public like, all right, I can trust Selah. It go down when it go up. Woo. You and him ain't never pay the same. You and him ain't never go Dutch. Woo. Netherlands, never, never, never land. Y'all ain't never grow up. I'm fitted in the middle, or that monkey in the middle better slow up. I'm riding through my city, everybody coming with me. I'ma be there in the trip. Right now I'm working on um, this joint called Cliche. This joint is really just about like the fact that everything in music is the same. Like, you know what I'm saying? When you're talking to somebody and you use a cliche, it kind of feels like the authenticity of what you're trying to convey goes down. 
you know, because you're not using an original thought. You're using something that somebody else said. In music, I just hear the same thing over and over again, man. Money, 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 drugs, 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 women, 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 guns, guns, guns. And it's just like, all right, cool. I understand that's where you came from. I understand that's the story that you have and how you came up. But I mean, where's the originality? Like, y'all don't even talk about money and guns differently. Like, y'all y'all say everything the same. If you're not familiar with CHH, it's a genre where if the artist takes the music seriously, to me, that's the purest form of rapper that you'll ever see. These are the facts, okay? We have to get off the same dope content, the same amount of volume, just like every other rapper, but we have to do it without any profanity. We gotta do it without any explicit lyrics. We gotta do it without all these things that all these secular artists have at their disposal all the time. We gotta do it without it. And we gotta do the same level without it. You tell me if a Salo or a Bizzle or a Seven or a Dayton or a Bumps you know, if they get to the top of the food chain and they pumping out hit after hit, 100% radio fr friendly, no cursing, no nothing, the radio ain't got to bleep out nothing we say and we dropping hits, you put your top five artists in the room right now from the other side and tell them to put out five records straight that are hits without any profanity. They lose their minds. The leaders or the people who run these corporations and the last thing that they want is a Christian artist to be at a place where Jay-Z is or Kanye West is or the last thing, you know. And I think a lot of it has to do with the spiritual aspect of people just being, you know, in opposition to Christ. But a lot has to do with the fact that the bar would be set too high for them to eat. That ain't nothing but a cliche. I didn't know what my name was gonna be as a rapper. Like I was just like, yo, it could be anything. Mommy was preaching and I was sitting there and I was like, God, what am my name gonna be? And she said, Selah. Everything after that word was like nothing. Selah just kept that going. And I was like, yeah, that's the name. I knew it was Selah before I knew what it meant. That's how I convinced I was. I was like, yo, this is my name. Now I looked at the name, I was like, oh my God. It means stop and think? Stop and think! That's all I want my listener to do. I need to be something more than just having people stop and think. Because after they stop and think about what I just said, what are they stopping and thinking about? Say la, man. His bars. <laughs> it, I, I don't even know how to explain it. Well, let me just say this. <laughs> it's so intellectual that right. it really makes me think. In the 80s, Rakim was known as the best lyricist. 2016, Selah could be known as the best lyricist. The way he minces words, the way he uses vocabulary, the way he's not afraid of using higher order thinking in his rhymes. It's important to understand that just because you're a rapper doesn't mean you're ignorant. And this young man sets the bar for all others. When I say I am the corner, it's more than just me saying my name. It's a proclamation. I want to be the corner. That thing that redirects you assertively toward God. Anybody can be the corner in whatever profession they're in. You can say, Wanda, I'm the corner of mothers, or I'm the corner of aunts. In your thing, you're the corner in that. I am the corner. 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 It's not just my name. It's what everybody should strive to be anyway. Because we're all, we're all people who are trying to turn people toward God, or we should be. You know what I'm saying? That's good. So that's why I picked the corner. Now that the album is done, I, I think where I am mentally is a place of relief. I really approached this album's creation like I wasn't gonna get another chance to make another album. And I'm realizing that writing that way is very beneficial to me. What I'm expecting from Memoirs of a Perfect World, his next album coming out, is nothing short of the truth. Everything that's about to come out of his mouth for this is gonna be complete truth. And I feel like it's kind of a contradiction because we know it's not a perfect world, but he's gonna show us what exactly a perfect world is gonna be in this album. What people can expect from Memoirs of a Perfect World is real. You'll never get anything fake. You'll never get anything phony. It won't be dolled up. It won't be dressed up. It will just be unadulterated truth. I don't create music like I'm gonna have another chance. I wrote this album like the day it comes out is the day I'm leaving Earth. And that ferocity and that passion that's behind that type of creation style, I think is what made the music what it was. And it's allowing me to be as at peace with it as I am now, because I know I put everything into it. I know I put every drop of pain, love, creativity, thought, everything, everything that goes into music in 
and, and its creation I put into this. Even if no one digs this joint, I'll be alright. I'm sure that the, the ravenous hunger will start for the next project, you know what I'm saying, if there's a next project. But for right now, I'm, I'm, I feel good, I feel happy.